Oh, this is the lecture number four for the second exam. And I'm going to do this a little differently by clicking up here. And the subject for this lecture is environmental health and toxicology. So environmental health is an area of study involving uh, looking at how various environmental effect, uh, environmental factors affect the health of humans and our quality of life. And you can see from this uh, picture here that there are several areas of concern. Um, this is a point source of water pollution. This is showing fracking, uh, different uh, uh, several fracking wells in a given area. And of course, there are smokestacks. In fact, those kind of look like nuclear silos there. And then uh, a spill going on here too. So if we look at this idea of environmental health, it's going to encompass several other fields of study. Economics is involved, of course, healthcare is involved, um, environmental science is involved, Ge geology is involved. There are just quite a few, again, showing that multidisciplinary um, approach to environmental science and different uh, areas of environmental science. So let's look at what some of these environmental hazards can be. We have those that are physical like uh, UV light, so uh, natural processes that can occur, uh, various disasters, UV light exposure. Um, these then can cause effects like this is a melanoma. And in fact, if you ever have a mole that looks like this, you need to go get it checked out. Um, and there are, in fact, uh, websites that you can look for um, signs of melanoma and the sooner you get that looked at the better it is for your outcome with that particular cancer and uh, not to say that melanoma is the only um, effect from uh, some kind of physical uh, hazard in the environment it is just one of the most common ones There are chemical hazards, and uh, a lot of the chemicals, which we talked about already, we talked about various pesticides and herbicides and how they can affect human health, and we'll talk about them in some more detail later. We're not done with them, and we're addressing them here, too. So um, Rachel Carson wrote a book years ago called Silent Spring, it's all about the human health effects that occur due to our exposure to, in particular, pesticides. Um, I show here one of my favorite books of all time, which is The Sheep Look Up by John Bruner. And if you ever have time just to sit down and read an old book, this is a good example of the type of uh, literature that was coming out in the 60s and early 70s when the environmental issues looked so overwhelming and uh, some of the writers then rolled that into their stories about how the how bad things could possibly get and that's this is one of those books and later we'll watch the film Soylent Green which is also a product of that time and it's from a book as well Biological hazards are caused by different microbes. Um, so living organisms or viruses that aren't living that cause disease outbreaks. And some of these then have been tied to, for example, global climate change. We've seen an increase in the range of tropical diseases like the, for the first time in decades, we're seeing dengue fever in the Florida Keys. So, um, and that's a viral disease. So there are some 
relationships, these are so, in fact, they're so complicated. The relationships are very complicated. And uh, Ebola, of course, is on our minds because of the ongoing, <coughs> excuse me, Ebola outbreak that uh, you've probably all heard about. And if you're interested, you can look at some of the symptoms of Ebola. Although currently we have no cases of Ebola in the United States. Cultural hazards, <coughs> excuse me, and I sure hope that this is a staged picture because, you know, we've got the two pregnant women with uh, one with a cigarette and one with a refreshing alcoholic beverage. Um, so, uh, and cigarette smoking goes into this, overeating. So there are all kinds of cultural habits and even norms that, that cause problems with human health. Um, in this picture, basically, we're looking at not so much, well, there will be harm over many years to the two women, but more of the harm to their fetuses. Toxicology is a specific branch of study where um, scientists look at chemicals that adversely affect living organisms. So we're not just looking at what might go on with humans, but all living organisms. So in order to understand a little more about toxicology, then we want to know how a um, toxin is defined. So let's agree on this definition. Uh, something is toxic if it causes or significantly in contributes to an increase in mortality or an increase in serious irreversible or incapacit incapacitating reversible illness or pose a substantial threat or potential hazard to human health or the environment when improperly treated, stored, transported, disposed of, or otherwise managed. So obviously I just read that one because I wanted to get all of those points in and uh, that would be a good definition for you to know for the test. Now uh, we do take the hazards, the environmental hazards out there, and we divide them into two groups. Are they toxic or are they hazardous? And hazardous is a broader category than toxic. Toxic is, is the worst, okay? So these are poisonous substances that cause serious injury or death. Or if we go back to this slide, meet these criteria. Okay, uh, hazardous on the other hand is again a bigger group of, of chemicals or other factors, uh, physical, infectious, uh, etc., <clears throat> that uh, are dangerous um, and uh, they do present health or other environmental risk. And uh, this picture, when it says today, it doesn't mean today as in February the 3rd. It just means at this current time overall about this river being under, uh, in great danger. We looked at uh, kids getting sprayed with DDT and at least in this picture, this guy is wearing some kind of protection on his face so he's not just breathing in the DDT as he sprays it on this body of water and look no children to spray it on either. Now we talked about bioaccumulation and biomagnification so some of these toxic chemicals and again we talked about mercury a bit build up in an individual over time or bioaccumulate. So um, they tend to be the ones that are fat soluble so that's why they they tend to um, be retained in the body, whereas water-soluble uh, chemicals are usually uh, urinated out 
through from the body so you get rid of those but the fat soluble ones they tend to build up and uh, again we've got the biomagnification mentioned here so a lot of these chemicals will either build up in an individual over time or bio accumulate or they might be biomagnified through a food chain and remember a chemical that bioaccumulates can also biomagnify through the food chain not everything that we're exposed to or even other or living organisms are exposed to occurs from human causes um, some of these toxic chemicals are naturally occurring and uh, in, when we look at mining for let's say coal um, if you've ever heard the term tailings mine tailings so there are some metals and other chemicals in the ground un underneath the ground that are not safe for living organisms and they're fine when they're under the ground but when you dig something up like coal you dig up those um, substances as well and then you've got potential exposures to them so um, that the human activities are involved but the substances themselves the toxic substances are naturally occurring occurring now a lot of our um, toxic substances are synthetic they're made in labs they're developed as pesticides or herbicides or something like that fire retardants there i mean the list can go on and on and uh, a lot of these chemicals that are produced and a lot of the naturally occurring toxins when they're disturbed can end up um, affecting living organisms by being uh, by contaminating our water our food our air etc I realize you're not going to be able to read this table and in fact I can't read the table right now either it is so tiny but I would like you to take a look at it by um, opening up the PowerPoint in PowerPoint and, and looking at this table or enlarging it in some way. Not because I intend for you to memorize everything in this table, but this is showing some of the immediate negative effects um, like cancer, birth defect, genetic damage. Well, I think this one is mainly about, uh, let's see, developmental endpoints. Okay, so this is what could happen to a fetus that is exposed by um, the mother being exposed to certain substances that are toxic or maybe even more considered hazardous instead of toxic, but the, the different effects that so don't memorize it but do take a look at it well we've talked about some of the problems we had talked about some of them before in class so what should we do what are our sustainable solutions to the presence of toxins and and in fact we did come up with several um, possibilities for dealing with with pesticides we talked about integrated pest management or uh, seeking the perfect pesticide or um, or organic farming farming and things like that or intercropping which of course are all part of integrated pest management so sustainable solutions how do we not only take care of ourselves but future generations and reduce the risk of being exposed to various toxins well how about preventing their release instead of worrying about cleaning up a problem don't spill it or put it out in the environment in the first place and in fact there are regulations in several countries like our own that uh, 
industry has to meet in order to uh, be able to carry out their normal daily activities. This is a picture of a scrubber and basically it's a air filter. So as the air that for let's say something's being burned to like coal to generate electricity then uh, the the air that leaves that you know it can't just build up so there's the the steam and the smoke and all that so it goes through this scrubber which then filters out the uh, nasties that would otherwise be added to the air um, there are controversies about this. A lot of uh, industry, they don't like this type of uh, prevention because it costs them a little more money, cuts into their profits by having to buy and maintain these scrubbers. Because obviously if you've got a water filter, for example, at home, you know that occasionally you have to change the filter. So. There are filters in this um, apparatus that would have to be changed periodically. But, again, sustainable solution one, prevent the release of the toxic chemicals. Whoops. Sustainable solution two, um, which is still being used today. In fact, uh, this is a lot of fracking fluid ends up uh, in deep well injection sites and uh, there seems to be an increase in earthquakes associated with this so we'll we'll talk about that later on but what they do is they drill really deep into the earth and then just uh, inject these in particular toxic liquids down into the earth with the hope that they'll never come back to bite us again. So they're also uh, using surface pits but lining them so that supposedly the toxins don't end up leaking out into the environment. Um, even in landfills this doesn't always work because sometimes the linings are breached and then you end up with these chemicals out into the environment. They used to just put them in big metal drums and uh, um, just put them out in a field somewhere and we know that that's not the best way to dispose of toxic waste. Certainly a good, it is not good to just dump it into the nearest pond or stream or something like that. A sustainable, another sustainable solution uh, would involve uh, these alternative methods of either destroying the hazardous waste or immobilizing them. Here at the college for our microbiology lab we use stains that contain heavy metals and heavy metals are not good for the environment. So um, if you ever were to take a microbiology class and do some staining, you might find that the staining waste from when you do stain a slide is poured into a glass, a bigger glass container, and then that glass container sits under an exhaust hood. And what happens over time is that the liquids that don't contain the heavy metals because they are heavy metals so they are not um, volatile so they don't end up in the air the water evaporates off and instead of having a jar full of liquid with um, these heavy metals there's a sludge down at the bottom with the heavy metals and that is a very common thing to do and, and a relatively simple not now in big industry where they're creating loads of of these toxins then of course the the whole scale is ramped up and and so it would be a lot more involved um so immobilization putting it into a solid form that is easier to deal with okay also just destroying the hazardous waste maybe burning it although that can also create problems depending on um, what kind of chemicals might end up in the air when you do burn 
Oh, went the wrong way, sorry. And uh, part of the sustainable solution is using risk assessment. So uh, testing the new products before they're even out on the market and then not approving them if they could potentially harm human health, the environment, or the health of other living organisms. So, um, is that, hang on, let me, okay, that was four, okay, five, maybe I couldn't count there with my Roman numerals a while ago, and uh, regulation. Unfortunately, in the United States, instead of the companies having to prove that their chemicals are safe, like in Europe, the, our government has to, uh, to prove that the chemicals are not safe for them not to be out on the market. Uh, perhaps we ought to um, change our way of thinking, but again, there's that big fight uh, in our own Congress about regulation and finding ways to, in fact, you'll hear this phrase often, job-killing regulation. So there are people who would like to see us stop uh, regulation. And then, of course, if we want to maybe be more sustainable, we ought to consider more more regulation of potentially hazardous or toxic chemicals in our environment. And that is the end of our lecture or PowerPoint 4.